On today's show, we're gonna take a look at the LensBaby Velvet Lens. Since it's Valentine's Day, we've got a beautiful model in here. We're gonna point the camera in this lens at her and see exactly what kind of creamy deliciousness we get out of this piece of glass. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live twice weekly show, thrice, thrice, thrice weekly show here on YouTube at youtube.com slash Photo Joseph, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, talking about all kinds of things, photo and video and live streaming related, including things like today's topic, this lens. This lens is from a company called LensBaby. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with LensBaby, LensBaby started off making these really cool, funky little lenses that had essentially a bellows between the lens, and you manually held the front of it and twisted it left, right, up, down, twisted it to get this smeary, distortion, creamy weirdness to your shots. And I've got one for an old Canon camera, one of the original ones, the Mark ones, or whatever they're called, the original lens. It's a super fun lens. And they have evolved. They've evolved quite a bit, and they're, they're still making those tilt-shift funkiness lenses. Now they have them with all kinds of accuracy. Instead of just manually moving it around, you can actually dial things in to really get the precise shot. In the, original, in the old days, you had to just, literally, you held it and kind of pushed it, and you could never get the same shot twice. So that has evolved to that, but they're also making lenses like this one here. This is called the Lens Baby Velvet. Now, the Velvet, the whole idea here is you get a very creamy, soft focus look about it. And the larger the aperture, this one is, goes all the way to f1.6, the creamier it is. It can actually be too much at close distance, and we're gonna see that in a moment here. Um, but as you stop it down, you get less and less of the creamy effect. So it's a, it's a really interesting lens, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So here, let me just get a quick little close-up of this thing here. Let's get this shot lined up here so you can actually see it. So you can see what this lens looks like. If you can find it on the camera, there it is. Not even gonna focus on that, is it? Probably not, let's see here. No, I'm too close. Oh, there we go. It is focusing. There we go. So there it is. It's pretty big as far as uh, for micro four thirds mounts go. It's, it is a little bit on the larger side, but um, you know, whatever. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. So this is what we're looking at today. For those who are watching live, as you well know, if you want to participate in the comments, do that. Just make sure you put at photo Joseph in front of it. You'll see, you see here, it shows up on the screen. I can address your questions. So good morning to everybody out there. And, uh, and well, we've apparently, we're apparently we are, our, our stream is, is falling apart. Oh, look, my backup kicked in. Why does this backup decide to kick in right when we're doing this? Go figure. So, um, yeah, if you've got any questions while we're going, make sure you put them into the chat there. Put the at photo Joseph, and then I know that you've got a question for me. But let's, let's move on with things, shall we? I'm going to invite my guest in here, Genevieve, to come on onto the camera here. Come on over, Genevieve, and uh, welcome Good to morning. the show. And uh, I didn't get to mic her up separately. I was, you know what, here, Ryan, I totally forgot to warn you about this, but <laughs> she's, a t oh, I should probably actually turn it on so people can oh, see you. I had uh, you covered there. Hi. It's, hi. believe me, you'd much rather, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so my, uh, Ryan, I just put this mic down here. You need to turn that on. So I probably should warn Ryan of these things ahead of time, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm bad like that. So hello, welcome. <laughs> hello, happy Valentine's Day. Well, I thank you very much. Happy Valentine's Day to you too. So Genevieve and I met, Years, it was like three years ago now, I think. Yeah. And we've been talking about doing some kind of a shoot together pretty much since then. But she has this habit of running all over the world and leaving for long periods of time and having fun. It's what I do. It's what you do. Where Where is the most recent big adventure that you were on? Where were you? Uh, the most recent big adventure was Morocco to Spain to the UK and Scotland. That sounds terrible. Why would you do something like that? I mean, gosh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you are now getting ready to do this again. Yes. You're going to be leaving in a matter of weeks. Yes. Which is perfect. Work, worked out perfectly timing-wise that she was able to be here for this. Uh, and tell me where you're going this time. Uh, my next stop is Zagreb in Croatia, uh, followed by Italy and hopefully Estonia, and then back to Scotland for a bit. Wow. Too cool. <laughs> she, you know, you think that this is cool. That's cool. That, what she's doing, that is just way cooler. Way cooler. So uh, <laughs> while you're doing this, you have a couple of different projects going on at the yeah. same time. Yeah, yeah. And you have a website that people can go to to see all about your projects. What I is do. that? It is wehomove.org. Wehomove.org. And mm -hmm. tell, tell our lovely audience what they will find at wehomove.org. Uh, you will find pretty much every project that I'm doing there. Um, but We Who Move is um, a series of projects I'm putting together, uh, podcasts, um, video documentaries. Um, basically, I research and collect and sometimes perform traditional uh, folk dances and folk music from all over the world. Um, and I do a lot of projects focused on how um, 
folk traditions are able to cross cultural barriers in ways that language uh, stops us. Wow. So Sounds awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. So check out the website. We'll put the URL down here. It'll be down in the, um, down in the comments as well. So make sure you click on that and follow along and see what's going on. You're going to be starting a Kickstarter at uh, some yes. point. We're it's actually, not ready yet though, right? No, no. We're actually, oh, we're actually underway and we're oh. about three quarters of the way there. Um, oh. I'm also, I also, in addition to researching, I also perform. I write my own music and then I also perform uh, new versions or my own arrangements of traditional folk songs. Um, under the name Juniper and the Wolf. Okay. And um, there's a lot of storytelling involved, but I'm producing an album right now. Uh, and in order to facilitate that, uh, we're doing a GoFundMe. A GoFundMe, not Kickstarter. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, and All right, and that, they can get to that from the other website. Yes, Okay. Definitely. And so earlier today, she was telling me that she does some old songs. She performs old songs. And I'm thinking, you know, songs. oh, like, you know, classic tunes from the 50s or <laughs> whatever. And uh, and she <laughs> says, no, they're, they're how old? Uh, between three and 600 year old, yeah. maybe. It's slightly older than last <laughs> decade's pop songs that she's covering here. So that is awesome. Very exciting. Right on. Well, thank you very much for telling us all about that. Let me get this mic out of the way here. And Ryan, you can shut that thing off. And I think we are about ready to go. So we're going to step back into the main studio here. Ryan, why don't you come on out? And uh, I'm going to show you the gear that we're going to be shooting with. And then obviously we're going to take some pictures. So let's move on. Thank you. First things first here, I probably... Let's go ahead and switch over to this camera. Probably should get the lens back on here so I don't forget about that because that's just the kind of thing that I would do. Start trying to take pictures and go, man, this is a little bit softer than I thought it was going to be. All right, let me, uh, uh, ooh, cover your ears, everybody. Oh, that's really loud, that whole obnoxious Velcro sound there. And let's turn the brightness down on here so I can show you how I am lighting this. All right, so what we're looking at here is this is a Westcott, no, yes, Westcott Apollo Orb. The cool thing about this orb is it's designed so that you put a light on here shining into the orb, into the reflector, which then wraps around and you can cover it with a diffuser or not. As opposed to a light pointing outwards, which when you point outwards, you can get a hot spot in the middle of your, uh, your diffusion panel. This way, all the light is directed to the back, it wraps around and it gives you a very even, very, very nice light. And if you're doing it without the cover, you're gonna get quite a specular light because it's such a huge, very shiny surface, as you can see there. You put the cover on, and you're going to get something much softer, but very, very even. Now, I am shooting with LED lights in here. And as you well know, LED lights are nowhere near as bright as strobes. So I've got a couple of LED lights on here. The, they are attached via this thing called the Westcott Triple Threat. This Triple Threat allows me to mount up to three lights on here. I'm just using two. And the two lights that I'm using are Felix lights. These are those LEDs that I really, really like. They're Little on the spendy side, but they're super, super good quality. Color temperature tunable, very, very accurate, um, very high CRI. So if you've got the budget for these, highly recommend them. Um, if not, then obviously there's a lot of LED choices out there, but I do particularly like these. So with that said, I'm going to turn the light brightness back up on these. I'm not, not gonna blind the camera audience there. Let's turn those up. Let's put this back into place and start taking some pictures. All right. So I'm also using the eyeliner once again. The eyeliner, as you have come to see, I'm really, really enjoying this. And so let me just get this into position a little bit better. There we go. Can I have you step this way just a tiny bit? There we go. I think I'm going to need that room there. And shine this on her. That's about it. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. Nothing too fancy here. Let's, uh, let's take a look through the camera. Let's make sure this is all set up here. Get a basic focus, and let's show you. Oh, I need to swap cables out. Hold on one second, audience. This is the challenge of not having, you believe it, all the gear, all the crap that's in this studio, and there's still things that I don't have enough of. I just uh, can't even imagine. All right, let's see here. Let's hopefully this is going to work up now. There we go. So let me start off. I'm going to close the lens down a bit. I am at, let's see, I'm going to go like F8 or so on the lens, and let's brighten that up just a touch. And if I... Right now, if I, if I just shoot like this and focus the lens, it is a manual focus only. I've got focus peaking enabled, so you can see that coming up on there. And I can focus on her quite easily. But now let me take the aperture and I'm going to stop it down. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go all the way down to f1. Point, uh, what was it, 1.6 on there. And you can see how incredibly soft and creamy that is. In fact, it's so creamy that I can't even actually focus at this point. I, I would have a very hard time focusing. Focus peaking works by looking for the contrast in the scene and seeing as that contrast comes and goes and it goes, okay, well, that's a focus point and it puts it on. When you've got the creamy view on there, there nothing's ever technically in focus, so it can be really hard to find where the 
most in focus position would be. So the tip on this is to actually stop the lens down so that the scene is sharp, nail your focus, get the focus adjusted just right, and then open the lens up and get that creamy look that you're after. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it down, get focused on her face, try and, try and pick up her eyes on there, make sure we get the focus peaking on her eyes, and then I'll start stopping it down and we can see how the shots look as we progress. Um, I'll take a couple of pictures, but the fun thing is that through the video, you don't even actually need me to take the picture, you see the whole thing in real time on there. So let's, uh, let's go back to this, and I'm gonna stop it way down again. Let's go down to like, I'll take it all the way down to F16 on there. So that'll make it really quite easy to focus. So, so now you can see very clearly, we got that focus peaking on there, looking pretty good there. Let's go ahead and actually stop it down a little bit. Let's see, I am at, let's see, I'm at F4 right now, so I still got the focus peaking showing up. So that's looking pretty good on there. It's, I would say it's just a little bit soft on there, so let's go ahead and start, let's just grab a picture on there. It's a little bit overexposed. I'm gonna pull the, pull the underexposure down just a touch on there. Very nice, looking good. So now let's add a little bit more creaminess. So that was at F4, let me take it down to F2.8 on there. Very nice, nice smile, love it, thank you so much. Very pretty. So there, that's kind of ideal right there. It's got a very nice, subtle softness to it that I'm really liking. But let's take it down to F2. Now F2, it's really getting soft. Now this is, that's really dreamland right there. That's beautiful. Oh, I love, that is really pretty. Oh, that's so, isn't that nice? I love that. Super creamy, and I think now at this distance, if I go all the way down to F1.6, it's probably a little bit too soft. That's... Yeah, I would say so. That is a bit too soft in there. Very nice look, but it is a little bit too soft. I don't think that that is really what you're going to want for the shot. So you might think, well, why would you even have the ability to open up all that way if it's going to be too soft? Well, remember distance. I mean, if she's farther away, if I go twice the distance back, maybe I can shoot at that aperture and it'll look fine. It just obviously depends on uh, you know, the setting. Your, uh, your distance from the subject uh, will really affect how that looks. So, in fact, let's just try that real quick. I can do that. I'm, I'm mobile enough to do that. Let me go ahead. Oh, it's all the way at 1.6. I'm going to pull back a bit here. And let's just see if I can get this shot. Let's go ahead and look through the lens again. Let me see if I can get this shot set up here like so. Let's go and stop it down so I can make sure I've got the focus on there. There we go. And I know that the soft box is in the shot now, so I'm just gonna raise that up just a little bit there, get that out of the way, get that out of the way, and there we go. So now she's a little bit farther back, and now I think if I go all the way open, yeah, now that's okay. Now I can kind of get away with it at that point, can't I? Let's bring this down a little bit, take a couple of pictures there. Nice, beautiful smile. So pretty. I like the coy look, it's perfect for Valentine's Day. <laughs> There we go, or the goofy one. The goofy one works too, I love it. The goofy, perfect, there we go. There we go, that's the shot, that's it, we're done, heading home. <laughs> <laughs> so that is all there is to it. It's nice and simple. Uh, this lens gives you that really, really creamy, delicious look, and you just play with the aperture to dial in how much of that creaminess you want. That's it, that's really all there is to it. Thank you very much, Genevieve. Appreciate you coming in today. Let's head back over to the main camera and wrap this thing up. All right, so as, uh, as you all know here, before we finish things up here, if you feel like you've learned anything from today's show, if you've taken value from today's show, I would appreciate it if you head over to photojoseph.com support and see what kind of value you've gained and kind of maybe put a little bit of value back, whether that means contributing on Patreon or via PayPal or just buying gear using the affiliate links, or if you've, you're setting something up and you want some personal hand-holding, personal help, you can actually hire me to assist you over the phone or Skype or video chat, whatever, um, to set up whatever it is you're setting up, whether you're building out a live studio, you just need help with your, your Lightroom library, whatever it might be, I'm available for that. So if you gain value from today's show or from any of our shows, I would please encourage you to head over to photojoseph.com support and push some of that value back in my direction. That's how we can keep this show on the air. So for those who are wondering about this beautiful lens and how much it might cost, let's take a quick look at it over here on b &H. this is, let's see, it comes in at $450 for this lens. So this is obviously a little bit specialized. You're not gonna use this for everyday shooting, but it is a beautiful, beautiful lens and totally unique. And it comes in different mounts. You can get in a Fuji mount. I mean, I think the price stays the same all the way through. You can get a Fuji, Samsung, Sony, and then let's see here, you can also, let me back up out of here. They have this for basically for everything, your Canon and Nikon. I probably have to back up a little bit farther. Um, there we go, so we've got, there's, there's Fuji one, there's Canon, it's the same price, yep, same price for Canon, same price for Nikon. So this is available throughout the 
uh, the threat spec in pretty much every camera manufacturer, at least major manufacturer, you're going to be able to get this lens for. That's uh, one of the fun things about these third-party lenses. They come up with this really beautiful lens, and they can make it for everybody. So it's not like you're lusting after, oh, that Nikon lens, I wish they had made that for my Canon or for my Fuji or whatever. Uh, buying a lens from a company like these guys, they tend to make it for pretty much everybody, which is pretty awesome. All right, let's see if there's any questions going on here at all. Otherwise, I think we'll be able to wrap this thing up. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I was talking about we had a little issues with the stream earlier, but we're back on back in business. No, no questions for today's show. Well, that was easy. That keeps it nice and easy. All right, folks, uh, thank you very much for tuning in today. Always fun to have you on here. Happy Valentine's to all of you guys out there. And with that, we're going to wrap this thing up, and we'll see you on Friday for an interview, which actually, do we see, did I bring that card up here? I did bring that card. Look at that. Let's bring this up here. I'm going to be doing an interview with my friend Ginger. She's going to come in, and she is a business coach, a professional business coach. She's going to come in, and we're going to be talking about the advantages of having a coach for your business. Whatever that business might be, but obviously we're going to talk about it from the aspect of a photography business. Are you starting off in the business of photography, or have you been running a studio for 20 years, and you just need a little extra help? Can a business coach help you out? Well, that's what we are going to try and find out on Friday's show. In the meantime, have yourselves a wonderful rest of the week, and we'll see you on Friday. Bye-bye.